Hello everyone, welcome to the next episode of the Warren series. Uh, in this episode we will finally finish the upgrade. I know it has been a long time coming, but uh, well, it obviously, like, based on what day this episode has been released, you can tell that this took a lot longer again as well. Sorry about it. So this is actually, as I'm recording this, one week after the last episode. All I did is mounted the side panels and the top panel and I also figured out a uh, drag chain in the back so I'll quickly talk about that even though that's also about to change so the sourcing guide the bomb uh, specifies 10 by 15 drag chains and well as I saw, showed in the last episode there was uh, yeah, I couldn't mount these with the stock holes, so as you can see, I drilled more and just mounted the red chain with the extra holes. But uh, it turns out uh, this 10 by 15 is too wide. I suppose they meant uh, 10 wide, 15 tall. But uh, yeah, uh, I think the sourcing guide or the bomb or something could do with some improvement. But uh, yeah, as I said, as a result of that, I couldn't mount this. So I mounted one of the 10 by 11 drag chains that I have remaining from my Tevo. And it's doing the job for now. But uh, there is another problem. There is no way I could route all of the wires through these drag chains. Even just routing the 17W2 connector here alone is not going to be possible with the uh, current drag chains. So uh, this means that I'm actually going right back to the umbilical cord setup as well. But this time I'm actually going to do it properly. I'm planning on ordering some cables from Igos that are rated for this type of application. And well, I'll probably sleeve the bunch as well, including the, the Bowden tube for this as well, obviously. And also, um, I did the redesign for all of these boards as well. So again, that's happening this episode. I haven't even ordered them yet, but you know, I know this episode will take a long time to prepare, so it should be done in this episode. So the, there isn't much change with this other than making this board a little smaller. I completely got rid of this board, but made this board a little larger. I basically combined the functionality of these two to one board. And instead of using a DB9 there, now I'm using a DB15. And that DB15 will run through a drag chain in the back. That one will be, uh, again, drag chain, not umbilical cord here. And the limit switches will run to the board there with the drag, with the drag chain as well. So I'm basically only getting rid of this drag chain, not uh, any other drag chain. Uh, also, I designed a board for here as well. So that is for connecting the bed connectors. So we have the heaters and the thermistor and the limit switch and the one for earthing as well. And I think I'm going to mount a PT100 sensor on the bed as well. So it, it, I also designed connect, connectors for that as well. So uh, yeah, that that's what the board is going to have. And as a result of this change, I have to redo this board as well so again that is also changed so yeah it is basically a complete uh, redo of the boards and uh, yeah that's about it with the boards also I am considering doing one change with the electronics chamber I am happy with this mode so mod it, the mode is staying but I think I'm going to replace the base uh, this uh, HTP sheet with a a relatively thick aluminium sheet and just mount the electronics to the aluminium sheet directly instead of relying on these DIN rails. I'm not really too happy with the DIN rail setup because these things just slide around and some things are really easy to remove. For example, there's a Raspberry Pi just gets uh, unstuck from here and you know stuff like that. Plus, uh, if I'm mounting things directly it should allow me to organize this area a little more efficiently as well. So yeah, that is something I'm considering. 
I'm not 100% if I'm doing it, but well, you will see later in the episode if I'm doing it or not. And uh, yeah, I think that's about it since the last episode and the plans. So the rest of the plan for the episode is after doing all of that, just get this thing working and get some prints and uh, finish the side panel parts, the front door and the rear exhaust and uh, yeah basically finish the entire printer is the plan so uh, yeah without further delay let's get to it and i'll come back to you once i've actually done some work it's been a few weeks since the last recording and one i'm feeling actually a lot better and two as you can see um i did a lot with the electronics chamber for the printer uh, first of all, someone asked me if I was still using the heat bed hinge mod, so I'll say it again. I, I replied to you, but you maybe didn't see it. Uh, I'm still using the hinge mod, and this big electronic chamber plate is meant to just attach to the bottom and reach from the top, and it will just screw to the uh, holes for, for the feet. And well, yeah, let's take a closer look at this. So, as you can see, all of the electronics are now mounted except the board that I'm going to have in the back. It hasn't arrived from China yet. It's one of the custom designs that I mentioned in an earlier video. But otherwise, everything is in place. Here we have the 24 volt supply, power supply. And well, I will pre-run wires from the power supplies, so again, I won't actually have to tear this down to reach them. And well, on this side, uh, I have the 12 volt and the 5 volt, and in the middle, behind that terminal, maybe it, it might be a better look from here, I have the SSR. And again, the SSR will be pre-routed to the terminal in the front. And then from that it will run to the board, from that it will run to the other board, and from that it will run to the heat pad. I know it sounds complicated, but it also allows me to have a few points where I can break the wire without actually having to do anything too complicated. And well, it should not uh, work nicely. These three terminals in the front, they are meant for the AC wire, so it will just plug in the back as usual and I will just route them to the front positive, negative and earth, obviously and well, as you can see, I also have the I'll try to say that less, I have the SKR boards mounted, the Raspberry Pi I had to remove the bottom heat sink from it to use the M2 and a half standoffs. That's not a big deal. This wasn't really cooling anything anyway. This isn't the model with the RAM chip on the bottom, even though it's a Raspberry Pi 4. And here I have the relay board that will be controlled with the Raspberry Pi. And well, I have the terminal in front, and that's because I don't really like dealing with these small terminals. They're just annoying, they get in the way, they sometimes break off and, you know, they're not nice to work with. So I will just pre-wire this, this block to that and I won't ever have to disassemble any wires from this, hopefully. I am waiting for some cable channels to arrive and after that I, I will be able to start working on some of the cable management. And, well, I'm also, again, waiting for the... It will come in the same shipment, the PT100 boards that I designed, that I mentioned in an earlier video. I will plug them on this board and this board one will be the heat pad, PT100 one will be the hot end obviously. And yeah, I will test my design with that. Well, if you don't, if you didn't watch that video, what it is, is uh, here. What it is, is it's just a board designed to adapt uh, one of these PT100 amps from China. These cost like two bucks, three bucks, something like that. And my board will sit in between this and the SKR. So I will be able to just mount it to a step stick instead of just having wires all over the place. It's just a tidier solution. 
And well, yeah, I think that's it right now. I got a PT100 thermistor from China and I drilled a hole on top of the, well, on the side of the heat pad and mounted it there using some just regular thermal paste and some glue because I didn't have any thermal adhesive. But yeah, hopefully it will work. The point of this is to get more accurate readings of the heat of the heat pad and maybe even do comparisons between multiple printers when and if I have multiple printers. And well, it's also a nice way to have some street cred, I guess, or blink Gucci if you follow the uh, Discord. And well, yeah, that's why I did it. I mounted the heat pad back and I also replaced the magnet. Old one is in there. And now I have the subtle designs magnet. As you can see, the surface is a little different with this one but I must also say that it really is a lot more stronger than the energetic one I haven't had any issues with the energetic one by the way I'm just replacing this because I have one and as I explained before the reason that I have one is because the energetic I thought the energetic one was failing but it was not it was just that I had a filament in there that I didn't see but uh, yeah, since I have it, I might as well replace it. So that's why I replaced it. I also showed you that uh, smooth side of this uh, spring steel sheet uh, got damaged, the PEI on it. So as you can see, I removed the PEI there. I had to use some uh, label remover for that. Neither acetone or uh, IPA worked well. This was the only thing that worked and it barely worked And well, yeah, if you are removing something like that try a I think you Americans have something like goo gun or something like that it's Something that's specific designed for removing adhesives And well this specific one does have a citrusy smell if it helps so yeah, maybe it will allow you to find the equivalent of this in your country. Uh, for the smooth side, I ordered a new PI sheet from Wambam. Uh, they haven't shipped it yet, but I assume it will be here by the end of the episode. But if not, we can always print out on the texture side. And well, again, the damage on this were because I couldn't do the mod properly at the time. This mod doesn't cause this issue as long as you actually account for it, which by that I mean just do the nozzle leveling with the piece of paper every time you open the electronics chamber and obviously do quad gantry leveling every now and then as well. And well, other than that, you shouldn't have any issues with my hinge mod. And well, yeah, that's it for now. I'll come back to you once I have more. If you remember, I had some HTPE sheets for my back panel. Uh, these shiny black guys here. Well, I really wasn't happy with the way they looked. They also bended like crazy, so uh, they weren't really sealing as much as they could have. And they didn't look that great, especially because I really don't like shiny finishes on it, things. So I bought this a composite panel it's i think just ldpe and two aluminium sheets well and well i'm really happy with how solid this is this doesn't flex around the finish on it is a nice gray finish and well as i said i'm happy with how this looks and this also theoretically should help with insulation as well but we'll see how much of a difference that makes in practice you'll also notice this black thing that i printed I actually printed this a long time ago, back when, I, back before I disassembled my 2.2. I was planning on making a, a more, uh, how do I say it, more polished way of routing the umbilical cord. And well, I print designed and printed this thing, then decided when doing the 2.4 upgrade, I will go to a direct chain, so I never even showed you this, but. Yeah, this is something I printed a while ago, and since I'm going back to the umbilical cord, I think this uh, this will work really well. This is the rear side of it. This is the front. I haven't removed the film on this side. So this is what you will see from the inside. 
As I said, the umbilical cord will run here and down here into the electronics chamber. And this large opening, I will use some of this ducting to run to the fan up there. It will run all over here and out of the window. So, uh, yeah, that's the plan. If I'm happy with how this thing turns out, which I think I am talking about the panel right now, not uh, uh, the part I printed, I will replace the deck panel with this as well, but I may wait until uh, I have the I have a CNC router or something like that so that I can cut it a little more nicely, or I may just cut it by hand, I don't know. But uh, yeah, that's the plan. I'll come back to you once I have more to show you. Didn't realize the two sides of the panel were different colors, but actually I like this gray more. This is actually closer to the advertised entrance at gray, so the other side they just use a random gray, I guess. But, well, yeah, I think this looks... Sorry, I think this looks pretty nice. I've also run the Bowden tube, as you can see. It's a little longer than it needs to be, I will cut this. And, well, you can see how the umbilical cord will route as well, through that hole. And I will have the PCB in the back right here, pointing upwards. So, it will just connect to that with a 17W2 connector, just like the old PCB. And I will probably bundle those two cables together, uh, the cable and the Bowden tube together, using some TESA tape. So it looks nicer. So uh, yeah, I'll come back to you once I have more. I have done. Um, I'm done with most of the wiring down here. I routed the power, the connect, uh, the 24 volt, etc. The AC power, ran the USB cables, connected most of the things that need to connect to the MCUs, other than the ones that need to go between the uh, motherboard and the MCUs which I will do once I have the motherboard. I've also connected the 60mm fans. Now these are a little louder than I expected, so I'll have to do some PWM tuning with these. Uh, they sound like a Delta fan basically, but uh, yeah, with some PWM they should be fine, I hope. And uh, I run the power to the LED hub here, LED lighting, and it's going through this relay here. I had to use thin wires, 24 gauge, so hopefully that's good enough and doesn't melt. These LEDs are bright, but I don't think they consume much power, either, so this should be fine. I also fixed the problems that I had with this webcam. Turns out the cable was the problem, so uh, I just uh, cut the cable very close to the camera itself and then soldered the uh, end with it, you know, just cut out, cut out the middle parts of the cable and it seems to work on the computer so then I just grabbed it with a USB extension ran it down here, around here, in here which uh, after that I also need yet another USB extension so hopefully this will work I, I don't usually trust USB expansions but I don't think I have a choice so that USB expansion runs around here and up here into the Raspberry Pi. If this USB extension alone was enough to run to the Raspberry Pi, I wouldn't have used that. But uh, it isn't. And uh, I also have longer USB extensions, but those are thicker and, well, it wouldn't fit in these slot covers. And I want everything to look uh, tidy, so... Uh, yeah, that's what I had to do. Hopefully that will work. I also ran the cable to the LED strips using the same method as well. And well, uh, yeah, the next step is to wait for the motherboard, solder the things to it, then uh, wire everything in between. So I'm waiting for that. And once it comes, I'll do. Uh, I'll continue updating you. I just realized the PCBs won't be here in time for the episode, so on the rear side I just grabbed them with a bunch of silicon wires, those are the AMB motors and the limit switches, and ran it through this track chain, 
uh, in the long run I'm going to have a PCB there as I mentioned and I also ordered some EGOS cables for that that will run through the direct chain and it will go down there. The PCB will use a DB15 connector and uh, yeah, I did not want to solder on the EGOS cable JSC XH connectors just to desolder them and do that again with uh, DB15 so I just as I said use the silicon random wires that I have for here again the PCB won't be here on time so I'm going to use the old PCB that I had it's mostly fine anyway other than the probe connector which I had a temporary fix and uh, it will it has a DB uh, not DB uh, 17W2 connector and the new PCB also has a 70W2 connector, so it is the same connector. And the Ecos cables are on the way. I expect them to be here in about a week or so. What the fuck? And finally, we have a print. It's nothing special, it's just a test cube that honestly didn't print that well, but for our first print before doing any tuning, it is acceptable. I'm doing my best to show this, but well, I don't know how it's showing up in camera. And I also checked the uh, steps on this. They are accurate enough especially if we take ABS shrinkage into consideration the, the steps are properly tuned I do need to change a few slides or settings here and there to uh, print things perfectly but yeah it is uh, pretty close but uh, kept me uh, prevented me from uh, print, being able to print some stuff is well for some reason my Max 31865 uh, RTD board, basically the amplifier for well, ADC for the uh, PT100. Well, it used to work just fine before, and while I do while I was doing the upgrade to 2.4, something happened to it, and well, ever since that I s s tried changing the Max 31865 board multiple times. I tried changing. PT100 multiple times, I tried hardware SPI on SKR boards, I tried both SKR boards and by the way I discovered one of the SKR boards is damaged, I'll get to that and well uh, yeah it, it was a huge pain I think I spent on this like, close to two weeks on this stupid thing so yeah I am really frustrated but at least I got this thing to work finally Right now what I'm doing is I have a 3-wire PT100 in there instead of a 2-wire and it's going up the uh, umbilical cord down there. It is a shielded cable and I'm also, I also put the Max 31865 board as far away from any other electronics as possible. And right now it is connected to the Raspberry Pi's hardware SPI, so it's not connected to either one of the SKR boards. You couldn't do that back in the day with Clipper, but nowadays it works. So all the colored wires you see coming out of the Raspberry Pi, those go to the Max 31865. I will put the deck panel back in there, by the way. It's just temporary for now, until I get everything sorted out properly. And uh, yeah, I mentioned one of the SKRs was damaged. It's this one, the one controlling X, Y and E. I don't know what happened to it exactly, but uh, the analog inputs didn't work back in the day. Now the SD card reader doesn't work, the hardware SPI doesn't work, and the MOSFET outputs don't work. So yeah, I don't know what's going on with that, but uh, yeah, it's not working. And that was one of the problems I encountered. Obviously the RTD was normally connected to that one. And well, there was a firmware update with Clipper to support better SPI, so that was something I wanted to try, but it didn't update and I thought it updated. Well, I discovered that when I was trying to flash a different bootloader and it didn't flash, so uh, yeah. Well, long story short, 
that SKR is damaged, but uh, yeah, it is working for now. And uh, yeah, as I said, I got the uh, Max 1865 working as well. So the next step is I will do a few basic tuning steps and then start printing four on zero parts. And well, you can see my uh, planned schedule for the upcoming weeks here. And uh, yeah, as I said, I will print V0 parts and then uh, I will also print Galileo parts and we will do the upgrade to Galileo in the next episode most likely and well after then after that we will do some more advanced tuning but yeah before I do that I want to print uh, V0 parts because I don't want to delay that project any further and well uh, yeah I think that's it for this episode uh, I hope you enjoyed it if you did please give me a like down below and thanks for watching